Hey everybody, it's Master Gallon Geist here, bringing you my review for the latest episode of His Dark Materials, The Lost Boy. And I had some issues with this episode, mainly because this felt like a very exposition heavy episode. We were told a lot of things instead of really shown a lot of things. And this kind of was the downside of both of the stories. Even though they were interesting in their own rights, were mainly told things rather than shown, th shown things. So let's get into the kind of smaller story, and that dealt with Will Perry and what's going on in his world. And this is our first pretty big introduction with him, and the thing is we are only shown a couple of things of, okay, he has an interest in boxing and can have some fighting skills okay he takes care of his mother but everything else is kind of like told to us now granted i understand there's there are some instances when in order to relay information that way usually the best way is to do it through telling but the thing is we have his mother telling us how like kind and how he likes to help people kind of similar to the father and everything and it's just it comes off really weird it's like Okay, uh, you, couldn't you have, like, shown Will in school kind of helping a kid, maybe with some homework or a project or something, or with some kind of problem? That would have been a little bit better instead of being like, oh, okay, we... Obviously, he's kind to take care of his mother. Okay, but... That's almost a kind of expected action with kindness, whereas the other ones kind of shows that kindness being reinforced. So we see mainly him, like, going to school people thinking he's kind of a freak his mom with what looks kind of more like OCD and kind of some kind of mental disorder or whatnot we're not really sure what it is but it's enough that when she has legitimate concerns of being followed and could probably show proof of that all of her shit is like shut down it's like you've yeah, you kind of want to look into that. Because we see him go to school. We see the mom pretty much getting ready to go out and do something. We see her doing her OCD kind of thing. And then Boreal and his group have pretty much been watching them. He goes up and tries to kind of get some information out of her. She's really fucking freaked out. Because I usually I think her only point of contact from the barest kind of information we get is mainly with her son, Will. And she immediately pretty much goes to him and talks to him about it, even though he's at school doing his, like, boxing match, well, boxing training with this one kid. And then, of course, the coach pretty much takes her aside and, like, hey, maybe you should go now. And she's like, I'm sorry I came here, but I'm sorry. I know it's kind of, volcano well, is kind of like a weird thing and everybody's like, oh, but she legitimately has concerns that she's being followed and being watched and that something's going on. Granted, that's us as the audience. I'm like, y -y -y. wouldn't somebody want to like go and check this? Of course, the, the one kid he's sparring with mouths off and they start uh, a stupid little fight. And then the coach pucks him apart and he's like, hey, he fouled me. I'm like, you're bad-mouthing his mama. What do you expect, you little shit? I mean... Fucking honestly, I mean, granted, there are other ways to deal with that, but I mean, you're in a boxing ring, what the fuck else do you expect to happen? And then you don't even really see the kid being, uh, punished or anything. Coach gives the obligatory, yeah, if you're having any trouble, well, let us know and everything. It's like, yeah, yeah, everything's fine. It's like, okay, we got really nothing out of the coach, and we just got that Will is understands and accepts his situation without even trying to talk to anybody about him. Okay, it just felt... I know it's trying to tell us some things about the whole situation, but it just needed to be more fine-tuned with everything. So, he goes... She is, of course, apologizing and everything, and he's like, it's probably nothing there or whatnot. I go back home, see what's going on there, and... Of course, he makes her this omelet and everything for dinner and she's pretty much expanding upon how he's like his father and all that even though he's never really met his father bringing up the whole 13 years kind of stuff and all that and how he's like his dad and 
he's going to he's special for the world and that he'll have to go out and like protect the vulnerable it's like okay this is really kind of strange because this is the kind of first time where we get this information kind of in this adaptation because these are scenes that really we didn't really get that much in the books to my knowledge and my recollection so I'm like okay we kind of get some bits and pieces later but it's more Will's part gets uh, really big when it kind of intersects with Lyra's later on so it's like alright we'll kind of have to see how this goes of course she then starts freaking out because she noticed that stuff has been moved in the room and all that but Will's like no there's no issue brings out some letters from the father we get a weird scene where Will calls for the mom after this scene looking at the place where the letters are hidden and she's like eh you can have them if you want it's, it's really kind of strange. I I don't know what they were actually trying to accomplish with the scene because it's kind of short and it's almost like Will is rewarded for thinking about trying to take the letters whereas it would have been just kind of easier for the mom to... If we want a kind of character moment of Will being like, okay, my curiosity is greater than uh, my respect of my mother's boundaries of saying you don't need these yet, and going and getting him or of the mother changing her mind at some point seeing something and taking them and giving to him because she does at one point see that somebody is watching the house and she's freaking out we of course get a scene with uh, Boreal talking to his kind of contact just pretty much saying that John Perry knew that he would be going somewhere and that he set up a thing to give sustenance money for his wife and son over all these years so he knew he was going to be leaving them for a while and that's pretty much it we get kind of info dumped on uh, pretty much Will's relationship with his uh, father kind of all that with the mother and we get a little bit of showing of the mother kind of doing her uh, kind of mental things her kind of disorder and all that and being really freaked out by Boreal pretty much surveilling them for all this time. The other portion, the biggest portion, deals with Lyra's whole deal. And this doesn't get away from doing info dumps either. We see them tracking around. We see Lyra kind of pretty much talking with Lee Scores being kind of getting that repertoire going. We see them pretty much trying to figure out what to do. Uh, uh, John Fa asks her to use the alethiometer to understand kind of what the whole situation at the station's like, that it's guarded by 60, uh, 60, 60 tartars and that they're really under the teeth. And as she's using the alethiometer, it gives her a vision that she has to go to a fishing village because there's something there that she needs to see. Now, I know it's supposed to be kind of mysterious and everything but I'm like okay this probably has to deal with like Billy granted I it's not really subtle on that so she of course is trying to figure out how to get them to let her go but John Paul's like I kind of need you with the alethiometer to give us more intel and information on what is going to be going on at the station and it's like yep but of course the alethiometer has led her to this it's like okay it's kind of important to show the definitive proof of what's going on at the station, but again, I'm, it's more down to execution of how it happens rather than the actual content. It feels like the plot's pulling us to do these things rather than it organically kind of doing it. Now, granted, they haven't really gotten that much into the alethiometer doing these kind of things yet, so hopefully it kind of works out a little bit better later on. And... As she's pretty much trying to convince Ma Costa to let her go and all that, and she gets some information from Serafina's uh, demon, mainly about how... It's really crazy how much information this demon dumps in that. I'm like, how the fuck do you know all that? Of uh, Yofor having captured Lord Asriel, and that he has pretty much made... Uh, uh, deal with Lord Azrael behind the back to continue his research in uh, using dust to create a bridge to the multiple worlds. It's like, okay. That was a lot of information to just, it just like, <clears throat> and I'm like, whoa. 
okay, no reason why you know this or anything. It's like, holy crap. We also get Serafina popping up and talking to a quorum, and I actually kind of like that scene. We get information that Serafina's like 300 years old, and see Coram kind of deal with seeing her after all this time and everything and how she doesn't look different but Coram does but she still recognizes the man underneath and him having his mind blown about the whole multiverse concept because the witches already knew that it's like okay and that Azrael's doing his stuff to pretty much get to those other worlds and then she kind of goes off and does her own thing while Coram Gets emotional about it. It, I had really no problem with the scene. I just kind of liked that we saw how emotional these two got over being reunited. And just seeing Coram there kind of like sucked. I'm like, damn. Seeing how they've lost their kid and everything and just how it has affected their relationship. It's like, damn. But Lyra is able to convince them. Yorick has decided to go with her. And... Then they go off, and we get another info dump where York pretty much talks about how bears can sense duplicity and all that kind of stuff, but yet he was duped by the Magisterium with his armor and everything, and he was duped into killing somebody and lost his status as prince, and that's, of course, how Yofor was able to take control of the bear kingdom. And again, it's more the execution of this kind of story it's kind of a magical kind of thing so there could have been other ways to kind of liven up the telling of uh york telling lyra about all this as they're essentially eating lunch and everything but mm, that's about all we get we just get the information of york was a prince he killed somebody this led to him being exiled and thrown out and then almost in probably close to the time of being in Trollison and getting screwed over by the Magisterium as well. We then get into the actual kind of like fishing village and it it felt kind of like it drug because I know there was trying to go for a sense of like foreboding and trying to figure out what they were trying to reveal here but it just felt a little bit more drawn out to my tastes. But Lyra gets into the fishing shack that she had had the vision of, and she finds Billy Costa. They go back, and they're talking about he doesn't have his demon and everything, and just seeing how the kid really doesn't react at all. Now, granted, I understand that child actors would have a difficulty with that kind of role of acting kind of lifeless and just limp, but they could have... I had no problem with him as a little, like, a regular boy with his demon and everything. Now, granted, we didn't see him that much, except almost immediately getting captured and then talking with Roger and all that kind of stuff. But they pretty much had him in almost a kind of comatose state. And it's like, yeah, that's kind of what happens when your soul gets taken out. And Lee Scoresby's, like, bringing that up to Lyra, like, yeah, you, if you get the power to pretty much separate someone from their soul, you pretty much have delusions of godhood and shit. And it's like, yep after that so Makasa and Tony have a emotional kind of connection with Billy as she pretty much tells him that it's okay you can go to Ratter and everything and then Billy dies and we get pretty much all most amount of emotion that we see out of Tony and it was a little bit better here being like oh god his brother's dead and then we see them do a funeral power for him and have their kind their uh, song to kind of send him off and I like that because that I don't I don't really remember that being a portion of the book of how it was done so I'd have to kind of refresh myself on that to see what goes on with that but it was an interesting scene to kind of see that and really <laughs> we get towards the end of the episode and this group of like hunters pops up and pretty much starts like ninja killing these people uh, of the Egyptian camp and I'm just like granted the Egyptians don't have a lot I mean granted they have now been like oh we're going to kill them now I'm like Jesus my costa I understand that your son died but you okay you don't want to become that thing that you're trying to destroy Ooh. but it really seemed like there weren't that many guards 
I'm trying to remember how many were like killed and everything, but it was like a few amount. One dude went out to take a piss and got taken out, and they fucking uh, captured Lyra like ain't nobody's business. I'm like, wow. That was surprisingly easy. Kind of a plot demanding it. I understand that she has to be taken to the station and everything. I was like, holy shit. But she gets taken there. She uh, gives a fake name and everything. They find that her demon can shape change and everything. And she's really close to having her demon settle and everything. And they have her pretty much go into another room with a sister. So that way they can check her out and all that. And then she sees one of the suits that was similar to what Billy was wearing. And she's like, oh god, we're in, we're in the station. Holy shit. And I'm like, yeah. And it was interesting because at first she doesn't know what everybody's talking about and they were like talking in like Finnish and everything like that. And I'm like, oh, this, this is kind of interesting seeing who they actually put in charge in this northern station and how does that kind of go into effect. Hopefully we get a little bit of that as Lyra is dealing with the whole situation of being captured and having to figure out how to get out of there before she is separated from her demon. So, I don't mind that the plot advanced and we got information on certain aspects. My whole kind of problem with it is that it is executed in a kind of poorer fashion than I would like. I would prefer to have it balanced between showing and telling. If you can have, like, a character show something going on like will showing his kindness showing his uh propensity for standing up for those who are weaker as stopping a bully from like bullying someone or whatnot that would have worked better with that conversation with his mother yorick probably yorick's was probably the best way it could have went down but it was kind of like oh here's an info dump it's definitely with seraphina's uh, demon giving all that information I'm like wow that especially not knowing how they know that it's like alright that's cool so we'll kind of see what's going on because we've seen previews that Mrs. Coulter will be uh, visiting that station so <laughs> that's going to be seen, interesting to see how Lyra and her kind of come back together not come back together but how that is going to shake out because they didn't leave on the best of terms but now we've gotten into a scenario where she's going to be like a test subject for the whole dust thing it's like holy god and once you learn that like you're trying to do stuff with this to mess with this dust lord Azrael trying to create a bridge how many kids would this have to have happened to to create that bridge i was like Ooh. that's where it gets interesting and really complicated and just like oh how are you gonna deal with that lyra so i'm i'm looking forward to seeing what's going to be occurring and how this is going to get to its end and when we'll eventually see kind of lyra and will's stories kind of converge so those are my opinions on the episode tell me what you guys think in the comments below if you liked it if you didn't like it if you agree with me if you disagree with me also like and subscribe and I hope you have a good day.